Um, welcome, guys, to another episode of Consciously Curious, where we deep dive into those that are thriving in their passion. On tonight's episode, this lovely Sunday evening, um, we're at Fernwood Barbershop with the co-owners of Fernwood Barbershop. Um, we have Patrick and Carlo Mendoza, and then Dang Winning. Dang Winning. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I dig <laughs> it. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for spending this Sunday evening with me. Yeah, oh, no, thank no. you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. us. Seriously. <laughs> it's been a long episode in the making. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in your own words, can you describe what a barber does? What it means to you, the art of cutting hair? Who wants to start? Carlo. Yeah. I know you're good let's at it. Let's just throw it in the fire pit. Like, let's add, add everyone's excitement. Yeah, a barber is, what a barber does is, is has, a, has an ability, has a vision, but with their vision they can it's kind of powerful because there's so many emotions that come from the action. <clears throat> it's like a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> you, you, you express yourself as a, as a barber by through the cut, and that's your art right. for the barber. For the client in the chair, they're, just, they're, they're in your hands, and they trust you. So they come in feeling a way as throughout the process they're looking in the mirror, and then they see like them transforming, and then as the time that they leave, you 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 give them this mirror, their emotions, their 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 eyes, like mm. their things could can change the water back out, and it's almost like power because because of your art and your skill, you affected, you made someone transform into something, yeah. feel something, and and <laughs> that's that's a, there's a lot there's a lot of and then after for the next week or two for the for the month that they have this right. haircut. People are talking about it. They're getting comments. They're still yeah. feeling something, mm. and it's a feeling. And it's it's an a experience. feeling, and you and know? it's crazy is that the barber doesn't even know what they go through, what they feel, but the the client does. And when they come back, it's just picking up where you left off, and it just keeps on giving. And then mm. that's just how I look at. That's why. That's why. There's a lot of things of why I love it, but that aspect right there is something that I could. I, d I couldn't explain until I actually got into cutting hair. Sure. Over in yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything? Any color to add? Man, barbering to me, it's it's more than words. You know, mm. it's a feeling. It's a lifestyle. It's it's who I am. Like, you know, I feel like it's a deep embodiment of of. It's just, I don't know, it's more than words. It's, sure. it's, hard, it's hard to speak on, you know, just on what exactly barbering it is to me. It, it's, it's everything to me. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, with it being a passion or whatever, um, it's also a place to just hang out. You yeah. know, it's like uh, kind of just build this relationship with your, with your customers and like the environment. You guys kind of become friends you know or family almost you know right and it's yeah hmm. really it's like a community okay yeah. a brotherhood yeah yeah yeah. You know? um there was a, a bartender that i had on previously and he I, he corrected me after i said customer or client whoever walked into his mm -hmm. bar and he always refers to him as a guest they're a guest in your home For and, sure. and and you've been treating everyone like that Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Um, definitely. Everyone, yeah, like that. right. That's why I tell like everyone that comes in. You know, as soon as they walk through that door, like their family automatically. Wow. Whoever sits in that chair, mm -hmm. in our chair, in my chair, like yo, you're you're automatically family. I'm gonna treat you the same way as no matter who it was before in right. that chair, after. Like no matter what the hell you do, right? You know, as a profession or career or whatnot, matter. it does not fucking matter. Like oh. when you're here, you're fam. Right. And that's it. I dig it. Um, at what point in your life, like growing up, did you realize you wanted to cut hair? Ooh, what? Ooh, that game. But man, we've, I've, I've grown up around it. Okay. You know, my, growing up, I didn't find out that my grandpa, uh, or my grandfather on my mom's side was, that's how he supported our oh. whole family. You know? Oh, okay. He was a barber back in Vietnam. Oh, no way. He, he, him and his brother, they had like a barber shop over there in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, okay. Saigon. In the blood. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely in my blood. And, like, as I said, I grew up around it. You know, my brother 
and two of my uncles growing up, like they would cut everyone's hair, all okay. the boys' hair in the family. So, no way. You know. Okay. Yeah, for us as uh, as kids, um, we would just kind of my my friends and I or whatever, we just cut each other's hair, you know. Um, kind of necessity, just so it's cheap. Because no one else would. Oh, because no, it's cheap. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. It was just like a hobby, you know. Really. Um, but to do it as a profession right. happened way later. And then, you know, way Car Car later. yeah, Carlo was the one that kind of put that in my head. It's like, hey, man, like, we could actually do this as a profession, you know? Like, yeah. we should take a shot at it. And, yeah, I never looked back ever since then. Same, same for you? You were just kind of growing up messing with it? Like, just cutting your friend's, friend's hair? I, I actually... <laughs> I was actually, as, a, as the younger brother, I'm always like tagging along, copying, and trying to see <laughs> see what my older brother and their friends and their crew is okay. doing. And a lot of them were cutting each other's hair, and I'm like, man, it's, it's actually, it was really interesting that they weren't even professionals. They had, they had developed this skill, mm. and we're around the same age. And I was like, man, I want to, no one in my group, and my, cause I'm two years, I'm two years younger, like no one in my group is doing this. Okay. Let me, let me, let me try okay. this out. And okay. next thing you know, people started asking me to do it again and do it more. And that's when I was like, maybe it's just me because I'm sometimes can be too nice. I don't like saying no. Uh, so the fact, the fact that they asked me, <laughs> someone at, saw anyone ask me for a haircut, I was like, wow, like I'm almost like an honor. Like they, <laughs> they want me to go to hair. So then I think just, that's when I was like, man, I, this, this is a good feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was this the in, intended profession for you guys growing up? Oh, no. Definitely no? Not at all. Definitely not. What was the, in, the, the primary vision? For me or yeah. for what I thought my parents wanted for me? Well, sometimes Basically. those match up, right? Mm -hmm. Growing up, you, you, your parents set a direction for you, and you're kind of on that path. Yeah, I always knew that I wanted to, you know, work and deal with people. Yeah. You know, helping in any any type of way I can. Okay. So, you know, that's why I went to UIC and got my psych degree. Oh, and, nice, okay. You know, dabbled in that for a little bit and just wasn't really happy with with uh, what I was doing at the time. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, going back to the drawing board, you know, that's when I, long story short, you know, I got my, went to paramedic school. And, you went yeah. to paramedic school? Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, okay. I was a licensed medic too. Oh, no shit. But, yeah. Went to Malcolm X. Oh, yeah. Loyola. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. Wait, you're a, you're, He's a, I'm a medic. Right now? Yeah. Oh, I teach an EMT class. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> you I get mean, it. <laughs> dude, I know about that life, man. It was my life. And, and what, you, did you try it for a little? You tried it for a little bit, and you're like, this yeah, is... Soon, as soon as I was done with school and um, my ride time, uh, when I, you know, with Malcolm, we had an internship, yeah, summer CFD, internship right. with CFD, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got to see a whole lot, mm -hmm. you know, the good and the bad, and... Like it's, it, the savings lives part was cool. Yeah. But the lives that, you know, were lost, like, that I saw and you know, underneath my own hands, that it, it was tough, you know, stressful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after I graduated and got my license, I, I think I worked for like maybe two, three months as mm -hmm. a medic. And, and then after that, I was like, you know what? Power to you, man. It's, yeah. it's not easy. I can't man. do it. It's crazy. I can't follow. Like, <laughs> I'm gotta, slowly leading yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go hard in you know what I'm passionate about. Okay. And, and and at that time, you were still cutting hair for fun, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So at that time, did you make that realization of like, hey, let's go all in on this yeah. barber thing? For sure. Okay. I mean, throughout the years, you know, I've you know growing up in the whole barbering community, and it isn't what it is now oh okay and back then like yeah. the only two bar or the only barbers that i knew of that were asian were me and carlo <laughs> oh no way yeah that's it that's all i knew and now like now look at it right. it's awesome right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah how about you guys i feel i'm probably along the same lines as you um <clears throat> growing up in a filipino family mm -hmm. you know um coming out of high school is like yeah, you know, job security, of course, I'm going to go nursing, good job, right, right? Right, right? Medical field. Um, pretty much, I just I just did a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. not really finished one thing. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a weird part of my life. I was just like kind of lost or whatever. I was hmm. just like, 
I mean, I learned that I did want to work with people. Um, and just in the interactions, what I like, you know, I can't sit behind a desk. Oh, you know? yeah. And that's just not for me. And I think just that human interaction and helping somebody um, is kind of where I kind of knew that's where I wanted, wanted okay. to go. And um, when, yeah, that, that, was, that was what I was supposed to do. Okay. And then until I got the idea from Carlo. So Carlo started it. Carl, so it's, it's weird because like, when I was, so I was about like sixth grade, so he's in fourth. Okay. Right? Um, my friends and I would kind of cut each other's that, hair. That young? Yeah, That's I mean, insane. It was, it was very basic cuts. For sure. Un, that was one of the undercuts, the middle part. You but know, you sixth grade, just, most kids are just <laughs> running around in the backyard, you know? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so it was just, like I said, necessity. And I kind of had Carlo kind of clean me up one time. And I guess he just fell in love with it. And he got really good. Mm -hmm. He got really good that... I didn't. I only. I don't have to cut anymore. You mm -hmm. know, he could just cut my hair, mm -hmm. and so you know, he he took it to another level. And it wasn't till about maybe six or seven years ago, mm. where he was just like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna go to barber school. You should do it too. You know, and you might like it. Who knows? Because I'm wasting my money going to school. So I was like, you know what? Why not? You were like pre nursing or nursing? Like I said. I, I tried just doing surgical tech. I limbo. tried doing like radio. I was like, nah, not this, not okay. this. Okay. So I spent, yeah, okay, like three, four you. years doing. No shit. <laughs> trying to find my my way, I guess. Right, 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 right. But, you know, ever since then, never looked back. Well, way to be the trailblazer. Yeah. Good, good for you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I mean, if anything, basketball was my main oh. passion growing up. Cutting hair was just like a ho was a hobby. Okay. I always knew I wanted to end up as a barber. I was like, oh, when I get older, older, because it was oh. just this norm of a barber. You're old, you're older, gentleman, you know. Sure. sure. So then I was like, I'm gonna go. I did. I took ba played basketball, uh, played overseas for a few years, and and it was a blessing in disguise where I got injured and and I thought about it. I was like. I gotta, I'm gonna get a head start in this barber career now. Okay. But basically, what is happening right now, like when, when Dang and I spoke back in like 2008 about potentially having a shop, yeah. everything that had happened is right now is I technically had envisioned it and wished for it in my mind and envisioned this shop, a place is what it is. And it's kind of crazy, it's like as, as things is actually happening, <laughs> surrounding myself. I was like, I want to be work with surrounding myself with like-minded people who work just as mm -hmm. hard as passionate. And along the way, there was other barbers in our community that that I would cut their hair and Patrick too growing up, and they work with us now. And that's why oh. it's like it really it's really crazy is because we couldn't force someone to become a barber. They kind of kind of happened. It kind of became part of them. Mm -hmm. And when I saw potential in my brother becoming a good barber, I brought it up to him, and he he bought he went in he bought into the system he he it actually became a part of him. So then now, Andre, Jasper, Mikey, uh, grew up in there, and then they we all kind of grew up into it, went to school and went, went along this process. And now that they're here, there's other barbers that is that we met uh, met like Daniel, Manny, and. And Andrew, Andrew, because mm. Andrew, and, and now we're all together. We all linked up. We've talked about it, and now it's just like, like, it's. I'm just so happy. It's, 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 <laughs> you it's guys crazy. are on cloud nine. <laughs> it is, and, and it's just the beginning. But really, like, to go back to the question of, right, of, of, right. of, of did I know that when I come barber? Yes, and it's 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 came back more than I ever imagined and it's just getting started. Oh it's shit, crazy. It's crazy. that's a cool feeling it's that it's crazy. just get, cause looking for, from the outside looking in, you guys have been like masters of your craft. But to hear oh, that, man. to hear that, and it's so humble to hear I, you guys yeah, say that. I wouldn't that. say we're a master, or I wouldn't say I'm a master of I mean, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's so cool to, yeah. like, it's good to hear that as well. You know, as like, as the creator, it's so good to, to keep yourself grounded, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Just to say we're just getting started. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, can you? So, is it a necessity to go to barber school now nowadays? By the 
for the for <coughs> Illinois. Okay. It is required to have to go to school, get a license, and to operate at least uh, for Illinois. Okay. Do I? Mm -hmm. It depends which way you look at it. I, I'd say is like there is a lot of to become talented barbers. There's people who don't go to school and they can develop the skill and it's it's, it's their will. Uh, it, I guess it depends on where you're located. Yeah. Oh. That's why I say the piece it, of that piece of paper doesn't make you. A yeah, barber, exactly. Right? Exactly. You know but, what's in there. Okay. But is what makes you. A what I do feel is like by going to school, going through the process, kind of like paying the dues, learning the, the the steps along the way, and there's a lot of things that, can, as far as all the side from the cutting aspect, that you can learn how to become. Because barbering is not just cutting hair is just one part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a small. It, that's just a small. small oh, okay. Part okay. Small. There's, there's there's so much other parts to become a, a well-rounded barber and and that's why going to school can help and, and and learning those things it can kind of polish up those those topics. Okay. So can you can you kind of like dive deeper into the other half, the other like 90%, 99% of that that pie? I mean, of being a barber? Yeah. What do they what do they go through in school then if if cutting is just a sliver? I mean, I guess part of it is like customer etiquette, you know? I mean, okay. it's the service. It's the service. Like, for anything, we're here to serve you. And they you actually know? go through that in school. Yeah, well, that's... yeah. And I mean, especially because of the school that we went to. Um, we went to the Barber Academy okay. in Schaumburg. Oh, no way. Okay. And um, so the way they taught us is, you know, we're, we're cutting live people from day one, you know? And and you get to develop your, your, your skill in talking to somebody, um, getting to know them, and, and be personable right. and, and res responsible, respectful, respectable, you know? And, yeah, it's just, it's, it's also, it's, it's more than just cutting hair. I get you. you, know? Are you Customer service. On, on the scale of introverted to extroverted, how would you guys describe yourselves? Ooh, I would say I'm uh, right there in the middle. Okay. So, like, <laughs> More, more on the extroverted side, though. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. Okay, okay. How about you? Yeah, how about you guys? Uh, yeah, I love, I love talking to people. I love, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I love the conversation. I just love, just hanging out. You know, it's a large part of being mm -hmm. a barber, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it depends on the situation. Depends stuff. on the situation. I mean, some so. people thrive on a one-on-one -on -one situation, so mm -hmm. they probably would thrive in a barber setting then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I dealt, like, I was doing, you know, private appointments before opening up. Here with these guys, open up firm with these guys. Okay. I was doing private appointments for like good like five, six years, mm -hmm. and you know it's I learned a lot about myself during those years and just being able to you know interact with you know a person or a friend like one yeah. on one like that and just build that that well, f build that relationship. At that point, your name is your brand if you're doing private mm -hmm. appointments, right? So you yeah, have literally to, you're my a business brand was at that Dane point. Dane cuts hair, you exactly. Know? That was me for the past yeah. however many years, but now it's just it's more than me. It's always been more than me, you know. Okay. You know, Dane cuts hair was just like that facade or, or just just a name, you know. Sure, it didn't sure, really sure. mean. So through through barber school, do they hook you up with an apprenticeship, or is that something you have to seek out on your own? How does that how does that process work out? Kind of seek that on your own. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, you go through was it 1500 hours? 1500 hours they in teach school, you. yeah. They, oh, okay. Um, and then afterwards, they do have a network too, like other barber shops will kind of reach out to them, like, hey, we're hiring or whatever. And there's like a bulletin board <laughs> numbers they can connect you with certain people. Oh, okay. But I mean, in, in the end of the day, it's on you, you For know, sure. but. I feel like, especially the network that you could build with other students in in the school, right? You can kind of get an in somewhere, because a lot of these guys, like we said, um, you don't necessarily like these guys are really talented. They've been doing it forever, but now they just want that license, right? So you're not only are you learning from the teacher, but you're learning from your peers who are just really good, and then they may be in another shop. You know, they can plug you in mm. to a number or somebody. But in the end, it's you. Okay. So straight out of school, did you guys... I met you guys through Andre's, right? But, like, was there a shop before hey. Andre's? Or? No, that was yeah, the, shout that out to Andre's. The, that was the first shop. That's okay. the Roots. Uh, worked at, okay. Worked at, and with a few well, a few of us from who went to the same school, after school, we, we kind of all cycled in working at Andre's, and it was just a... That one learned a lot 
as well is because meeting working at Andres, it's been a, a barbershop that has a lot of history. It's been around since fifty nine. Okay. And shout out Kirk. Shout out Kirk. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Kirk. Kirk Bird, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a that was the the first shop and we all where we all built the chemistry to know that we can work together. Okay. Okay. Did you guys grow up together or how did how did the what's the origin story behind you got you three? Well, me and Carlo are brothers, right? For sure. Yeah, and then I met Carlo years, years yeah. ago through basketball, you know? Basketball. It all started from <laughs> basketball. Yeah. Okay. PBL. Yep. You know? I remember seeing him, like, oh, man, that guy's got a fresh ass cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear this, he goes, this guy's yeah. a barber. And I was like, what? I was like, mm-hmm. I've got to talk to him. And we're on the court. And I'm like, I, I just hear that he's a barber. Same. And, <laughs> and we're on the court playing. I was like, oh, man, this is another barber. That's where the bromance happened. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can do it. Hey, bro, you cut too? Yeah. <laughs> Let's be friends. And that's how I met Dang, is through Carlo, obviously. For sure, for sure. Um, and where did you, did you get, where did you get your kind of hours in after school? After, uh, I started in uh, working in a barbershop since I was 19. Oh. Yeah, like way, way, way so you've back. you've been in the game. Mm-hmm. And then you, did you go to school or did you? I got my uh, license in Argyle. <laughs> From Argyle? from Argyle, there's a shop yeah. in Argyle. Oh, that's dope. That's so cool. for there's some, a school in for Argyle. some, is it more of just a piece of paper, a certificate, and for others, they've it's actually like laid down the foundation. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Okay. It's it's crazy. It's uh, at school you would even have people who've retired, sixty five that just want to pick up a and hobby. Then that was always mm-hmm. their dream was just I just want to be the neighborhood barber and just cut whoever I want to cut. Oh, and it's like the hobby, but. Hey, I'm I'm licensed now. I'm a barber, and they want to just do a, something totally different. And mm-hmm. then now, now that they have programs now in school, while you're in high school, you could still take you could still take hours to go to school. So by the time you're graduated, you can be finished with your hours and already get start immediately on your career after so, high school. Yeah. So when we were just starting as low as like as as young as 15, going all the way up to 65, 65. you know. So. You're meeting, you're constantly meeting people of all ages, conversations. It's just it's just part of the shop experience, and you learn a lot every day. Okay, that's good to hear. I, I feel like you guys have had so much experience before going into school. Mm-hmm. So, like, what percentage of school attributed to what you're, like, what you are I, now? I would, I would say that the, in school, I learned a lot about the anatomy, the head shape, the structure. Oh. So, so learning how yeah. to, to blend and fade of a technique of making levels and blending out blending it out mm-hmm. that's something that i had an experience for by just learning with my prior to school okay but while in school it's all about Learner, learn, you're learning like the vernacular yeah, and yeah. like the anatomy placement like of the way lines according to head because someone can make if you just make a line and or even just make it if you just blend out a hair i play blend out hair but if it doesn't suit the person's head shape or frame their face right it it's not the best that it could suit the client. And that's, and that's what we all, I feel like in the shop, we take pride in is that, is making sure that the haircut is, is, is tailored. suits the client, is tailored for the yeah. client. Yeah. And, and, and in, in school that helped, that we helped learning that to, especially because of head shapes and hair types. And we've seen at school, you get, that's where you can learn and, and, and make your mistakes in that sense but that's mm-hmm. where you learn from and the all people from all all types hair types and hair so they come in and you can learn in mm-hmm. that way. and then yeah that helped a lot that helped a lot in school is there a certain um tough shape or type of hair to, to cut tougher than others um, or something that just like you have to add extra hours of study into i don't i wouldn't say there's any tougher types okay of texture or style is just like starting off you don't you know it's kind of like a blank canvas and mm. you know i guess by default we learned how to cut asian hair sure first. yeah it's, it's, it's on the person yes yeah, yeah. it all depends yeah. on the person what you're used to you know it's kind of like yeah like you said like we're used to cutting asian hair. i mean in in school within that 1500 hours did you get every demographic out there yeah we were I fortunate enough so. that oh okay. our school Totally diverse. Yeah, anything, oh, yeah. okay, okay. I, think, I think anything new is what was difficult. Okay, yeah. for no, for sure, yeah. for sure. Damn. And, and also touching to uh, 
like the another benefit of going to school and that you know like where you learned a lot of your base from is you know the school can bring in volume that you may necessarily like not be able to do on your own mm -hmm. as a beginner so you're getting all this practice all of this different types of hair head shapes you know ethnicity, ethnicities and everything and just the repetition you know you just got to keep getting your reps in right that's the only way to really get good right you right know? i think the united states is the only country that requires a cert license a license, a license. okay actually i think so i think so I'm not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you mentioned illinois earlier so it, it's different per state oh, yeah or? yeah some states don't need it or no you do it's just the requirements are, are different. different like number of hours or things yeah. like that okay yeah. oh, okay exams okay. and then some require a practical exam to get the license oh. some are just to require a, 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 a test uh, okay written, written test. it's interesting because like n none of your like guests and clients like have come in like where's your license you know like no one's going to question you i mean we have them you know? right right yeah. right right um at we do have it. I mean, you, it should be up. We, I think we did some moving around. But oh, it, it for sure, for sure. Up. It should, so it should be yeah, posted should up. Be okay, up. okay. Yeah. Um, as far as the day-to-day -day goes, like at Andre's, it was walk-in only. Yeah. Right? What's the, and now you guys do appointments. So like, at the, do what's, both. You do both. We do both. What's, what's the logic? Because yeah. there would be a line for you guys, like hours. <laughs> I mean, we'd but then to, there's be able to, to be able to like, you know, have, uh, give options to anyone who walks through that door right because i mean the time now people are more inclined to have the appointments you know mm -hmm. like I, I need to know when i'm gonna get in this and that they, people are so on the go you know they kind of need to plan their whole day but on the other side there is a bunch of people who can't commit for that reason that they're always on the go and they need that walk in that walk in something. like hey whenever i have time i'm gonna come in but sometimes they're chilling here for like hours mm -hmm. because you guys are that good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can just build a. I feel like they come. That's one thing, but you know, they. I feel like they come for us. They go. Oh, you know? they come to hang out. For, yeah, to hang out. Yeah. Everybody. There could also be people walking by in the neighborhood. They just see all these people hanging out. Sparks and they just, buzz, they just out? walk in, that's and so cool. they could have that opportunity to get a haircut. So people just walking by, or people just being referred, and people, and that's why we want to. Maybe that's again another side of me is like I don't like to say no to people because I want to take care of everybody. Anybody who comes in that door who wants to get oh, a haircut, man. I want to, I want everyone to get taken care of, and that right, and that right, doesn't right, matter right. if it's just by me, by everybody else. Everyone's taking care, getting taken care of. Because we're we're trying to build a community, and I feel like with Fernwood is that I mean that's what it represents is the community, family aspect. So it's like anybody that walks into that door, even if it's their first time, we we try and build an atmosphere, an environment where. People are welcome, you know. It's yeah. like, yeah, there's a bunch of people here having a good time, are pretty chill, you know, mm -hmm. and not feel like, oh, you're the new guy, or you're like, you know, kind of like yeah. it's just, just, a just by being spot. us, you know, letting everything happen organically. And but yeah, we, but I, it's, I'm, I'm very happy that you were able to experience and see what it was like at Andre's, seeing the hours and the weights, and we cannot thank our client, friends, family, clients who do are so patient and wait hours. It almost fuels and drives us to continue to get better at a craft to give to give the best service and hair quality haircut because someone is giving their time that value of their time that they wait and then they appreciate our self service it almost we, we, we do we give it back by the haircut so the moment that, time that they are in the chair those hours that they have waited we believe it Mm -hmm. We're gonna give it back. It'll be worth it. So that's why I thank everybody. Thank everybody who's listening. Listen for for all the people who waited, who are patient, at all times. Thank you so much. For mm -hmm. real. Well, one thing. So you you said you you you've been to Andres. You've mm -hmm. waited. Well, just stepping into Andres and stepping into here. You've been here too. It's like, yeah. what's the difference? What do you like? Or what are your thoughts on on just how how that looked the like? Appointments and walk ins. Walk ins or the vibe. Anything. I think I had an appointment, but I uh, I didn't pick a specific barber. And to be honest, I was actually I wasn't nervous going to Jasper. Jasper was great, and oh, walking walking out of here, I feel like I could have gone to anyone and been satisfied with my cut. Seriously, nice. um, you. and you know the ambiance and not just like what it looks like aesthetically inside, but how you guys interact with each client was a little 
to be honest, a little warmer than, than Andre's. Mm-hmm. Andre's was a little packed, but I mean, both places have that old school barber vibe. Um, so I can, I dig both, both yeah. places. Um, but how do you guys, like, how'd you guys, when, when was the right time to like branch out? Man. When did you guys feel ready to, to branch out? So it, it, I think it was just a feeling. Like yeah, it's yeah. hard to like well, pinpoint it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, were you tired of working Timing. like just Dan cuts hair? Like, were you, were you wanted something more than that? Yeah. Okay. And I've always been a goal oriented. To have your own? To, to not necessarily have my own. Like I've all like you know we're doing it together and just not my myself not right, by myself right. so you know like I knew that I just wanted something more when I found out my wife was pregnant. Oh okay. I was like, you know okay. what? Like all right, like let's get things into gear and let's get it going. Right. right. <laughs> you okay. Know? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Was it tough walking away from Andres? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was tough. that was yeah. bittersweet. I mean, that basically how I. Me as a barber grew in there, you know. Mm. Like, I learned most of my my stuff is from from right. Andres, learning from Kirk, yeah. just changing it up, you know. Because then, yeah, definitely learning a lot of service, meeting people, but even just becoming in the city. Because we all we were well for me. I'm speaking from myself too. I was we we're in the suburbs, mm. and there wasn't really many shops. But to be in the city and to kind of get that feel and the vibe, and it's just kind of like it gave me like a. Leaving there, I felt more confident, more prepared, more ready to open it, uh, to to be a business owner and shop. Learn because our previous owner Kirk, he had trust us, given us the trust to run the shop, and he kind of showed us the ways, but he let us do our thing. Mm. And when we built that chemistry, I felt like we we're ready because when I first when I, when I first started in that shop, there was only one other barber working at that time. Kirk was saying, do you know any other barbers? We all, we all worked, and our goal at that time was simple as this. Let's just get this place busy. Mm. All right, then we did. Years go by, we, we staffed the chairs full, for, full time, and the place is lines out the door right. that we have more than enough barbers, and then I realized, <laughs> that, I was like, where do we go from here? And I felt like at that time, I was just like, I think it's a, it's a sign or it's a time, and then as things all fell into place, we linked up with Dang, and we and we were, we've talked about it, but in the past, timing wasn't right. I was overseas. He was doing, he was mm. working in shops. I'm kind of, I'm really happy that it did. Like it kind of happened the way that it did because, mm-hmm. had Dang and I did it back in 08, it would it would just kind of just be us two and then this thing. But now we have a a, a bigger squad family, and I'm just like. The timing was everything with this. Yeah, because the chemistry too with working with Jasper, Mikey, Andre, like Andrew, Daniel, Andrew. Yeah, like this was this was the goal Manny from the too. beginning. Manny. Yeah, Manny. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's it was the timing of everything. You know, we all got to grow individually, and kind of build clientele, and uh, you know the vibe of working together. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, now what? You know, let's, let's do it. You know. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you've assembled the Avengers, the dream team, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> you, you, you've cultivated your dream team. Hey, I way. like it. Hey, cultivate the roots. Cultivate. So, yeah, cultivate tell me about roots. And it, yeah, it's cool know. to, like, see, you know, the rest of the guys and see their come up and, you know, yeah. see them get cultivated and everything. And <laughs> oh. Just, yeah. no. Yeah. What I'm saying, too, is they de- definitely cultivating, but in uh, to see... so. Yes, we were from Chicago, except for Manny and Daniel. What, okay. What's also interesting is about our group is, our, our team is that Manny and Daniel are from the West Coast, and then they they've been cutting hair. They they've developed their style. They have they have they're have, bringing a little bit of the West Coast California, mm. to the Chicago, Cali vibes, the yeah. Cali vibes to Chicago. Hey, okay. Yeah. And as far as the barbering, what's kind of crazy? We're talking about like assembling of, and timing. Manny was Manny has been cutting hair for a while too. Manuel Fresh is is, is an Instagram. <laughs> we, we've we, a, a handful of our barbers been following and, and came up with him. And then, long story short, moves to Chicago. And, Just in time. And and we were have mutual friends and we met. Next thing you know, fast forward, we we're working together. But the thing too is, is it, it's almost like when we work together, seeing his, his style of five of the cut of of working together. He, we asked him, was like, hey, do you notice 
how is it? Because we we haven't cut in, in, in California, but he's telling us it, it Chicago has a different a different vibe. That the style of cuts is slightly different, but he he was describing it, and it was just kind of like I was like, wow, like the fact that we all come together, we mesh, whether you're any part of the world or in the nation, we can share. Barbering is what brought us together, mm. and then and that's and then yeah. now we're here, and then same Daniel too. And, Oh man, I can go on. I can I can yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. I can talk yeah. about our barbers. But basically, the, the, the yeah, I can talk about the passion. <laughs> yeah, the, <Sick> yeah, <clears throat> this is what brought us together. Yeah. That's sick. All right, damn yeah, man. <laughs> I can talk about everybody <laughs> for so long. That's how no, much I feel. Sure, That's yeah. how we love all of them. I love know? them all. I, I know. I, uh, and originally, I think your your thought was like, I wanted everyone on here. And I just didn't have enough microphones, sadly. Yeah, that was, so that was big, a misunderstanding. I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Get the whole shop yeah, in Yeah, the here. whole squad in here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Damn. Yeah. No, episode two. Episode, <laughs> yeah, episode two. Everybody <laughs> has their own story, plus more. Why, why the city instead of the burbs? I, I think the simple fact of seeing all types of people, the, the you demographic. Know, why North Center? The energy. Uh, <clears throat> North Center. We, so when we, when we were... When we were looking, there was factors that we kind of we were wanted to be by the inter, like an intersection traffic having like parking, mm. just being so our surroundings being by a train like be, like the, the the location of what is surrounding it it it, it fit yeah. but the time uh, there's timing that's timing time, yeah. yeah the timing is in when we went to barber school it was uh, Mike Weinberg was which is the old like, previous owner of Iron Heritage which was mm-hmm. the barbershop here before oh, okay. and mm. Patrick Patrick was was cat it was, it was just a through conversation and it just came up you know they're, they're trying to relocate and uh, so not necessarily we chose North Center um, it kind of happened like kind of just happened oh. organic yeah. but yeah. how it worked out was we're from the North Burbs you know <clears throat> uh, so a lot of our customers from Skokie Evanston uh, Glenview, Niles, like right. that, like that, where all those meet, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, we worked at three different shops: West Loop. We worked in the West Loop, right. Lakeview, right. and we still cut it in the suburbs. So the fact that this came up as North Center, which is almost kind of in the center middle, of yeah. the yeah. burbs and everything, it was just crazy. Interesting. Okay. And it was just like, yeah, this is this is it. Yeah, I'm from the city. I grew up, born and raised in Chicago. So. Oh, okay. You know all the shops that I've worked at in the city, so <clears throat> yeah. I, I just I know it's, see, it's yeah. probably pricey in the city, but but you guys make it work. Just make it work. I mean, eventually that that'd be cool to have another one in the burbs. <laughs> you mm, know? Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. You know, everyone <laughs> talks cool. about scaling up when you're ready, but then oh, that's you know, not, yeah. do you do you how do you retain that same charm um, that you guys have built? At the at the first location, you know. Oh yeah, well, it's, it's mean, hard. To, a, it's hard. I know. It's like conversation way down the line. It's hard yeah. to let go. Um, you got You really have to trust that that next oh, person. Yeah. We're still learning. We're it's, still learning. In barber school, do they teach you how to run a run a business? Yeah, there's a, there's yeah. a business. There's a section, section for that. that. Okay. Uh, licensing. Um, like I said, customer service. Now, like what about cash versus credit? Because you guys are. I keep forgetting that you guys are cash only. It's just simple. I think it depends. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's old school, preference. Right? Old know. school. Yeah, it's old school. You guys have like a modern slash old school like vibe going on. Yep. Yeah. Because without the tradition of, of barbering, barbering, it would. That's what barbering is the oldest, well, the oldest, oldest profession. Oldest profession. The next, next to prostitution, which is, <laughs> hey, which is sex workers that, are next to that. <laughs> but uh, barbering is the oldest profession. <laughs> And I think it's understanding the roots to knowing what has it has grown into now. Mm-hmm. It is not that one is right or wrong, and I think it's just adapting to the times, kind of keeping but up paying with the respect, times, yeah. adapting to the times, and paying respect to what to those before us. And that's when you combine it. I feel like being anyone who walks in the door, whether you, what what generation you're from, you can you can relate. You can relate somewhat mm-hmm. to something in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I, I think it's my favorite scenes in the shop is when you have like a little kid all the way and then you get some, you know, senior, senior, you know, an older guy just coming, hanging out and, you know, and just vibing out with each mm-hmm. other and everyone's just 
It's from all walks yeah. of life. All walks of life. Different Another ethnicities. Part to add, sorry, oh, no, to no, add, please, to please. add a wide noise center, but um, when we were looking at the space, uh, Patrick had talked to to Mike and was just like, "Hey, uh, catching up. We're we're, we're actually looking for for spaces for a shop." He's all, oh, "Really? I'm looking to move. Want to come check out the shop?" We checked it out. The place, the size from was was a decent size, but what also attracted us was, was there's a side yard. And we, I, I haven't seen any barbershop with it, and, and let alone it's in the middle of the city. It was, it just kind of like, it felt really homey. Mm. Like very home and just felt. Felt right. Felt, felt right, yeah. And you guys had your, what, one year? Is mm-hmm. it when you're one year? Yep. Yeah, August yes. anniversary. Yeah, August. Congrats on that, guys. Thank you. Big milestone. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what else do you guys feel you do well in, in differentiating yourselves from other shops? Like, how, how competitive is it? I know there's plenty uh, of heads to be cut, right? Like, so, it's not, is it not, it's not cutthroat? We don't, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't see, we don't look at barbering. We don't look at any other barbers, any other shops as competition. Okay. That's what I feel like, you know, growing up and been doing it for so long. You know, I saw how it could be and how cutthroat it can be. And I just didn't want that for for myself and for for all of us and whoever, yeah. like, you know. There's, you know. there's so many people in this uh, in the city, so many people in our, in our surroundings that even if it was just one shop, there's no way that this one shop can cut every single person. 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 Plenty, plenty, plenty of heads there's out there. There's no way. There's so many people. Yeah. The way that I look at it is like, other other barber shops, if we help each other, we learn, we kind of promote each other. Could because as, as long as people are getting taken care of with with good quality haircuts, and that's if there's good barber shops, you know? yeah, that's all really that matters. If there's barber shops that take pride and they want to help people good. Let's let's co- let's work together. Let's learn from each other because that's what we want. Yeah. yeah, it's it's to help everyone because okay. there's a barber shop for every customer or guest or whatever you know, and vice versa. So. Everyone will gravitate towards what they like, and if as long as there's a lot of good quality barbershops out there, there's no competition. Like that's that's better for the city. That's better for everybody. Nice, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's also there's different. Yeah, we all do the same thing. You know, right? Right. it's right. all love. There's yeah. There's all the, there's all there's all the shops with different price points, different vibes, different persons. So it's like for for people who look for somewhere that can be somewhere quick quick on the go and so there's there's places that charge lower not that it's bad or wrong because if there's there's a family with five kids you can't expect to just spend a yeah. dollar for a, even though they want that but then with there's different tiers of that and i feel like like as patrick was saying there's there's a right shot there's, for a, there's a right shot for everybody so yeah it all depends on personal preference you know yeah. right and all we're trying to give is like the best version of ourselves. Oh, I love that. You know. Um, how did you guys come to this price point? Is it still it's forty, right? Mm-hmm. How did you guys come to that? Because I've never been to another shop that's forty. I mean, and, and you guys know, like obviously have come to know your worth, but how did you come up to that? It was kind of based around where we have been at and okay. like what we were charging before. Kind of, I don't know, just kind of just the time. The times like are there other shops that do charge forty that yeah, I just don't? Yeah. oh there are okay I have no idea then yeah actually right. before coming here I was, you know I was I was charging more good for you, you know, know your but, value yeah but at the end of the day at the end of the day you know you know a piece of paper doesn't equate to what we are and what yeah. we charge and what we're worth yeah, that's not the, that's interesting not the main that, point yeah what that's it, not what we do yeah it. yeah because obviously it's a business right and like sure money is involved but. Like I said, from we've been talking about this. This is our. This is what we love doing, you know. So it's money is not the first priority that we think about, you know. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When you guys were coming up, um, can you describe or remember a time where you had an unsatisfied customer? Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and sometimes they don't show it right away. But like, how is how do we fix that? Like. Keeping composure, being handling it with class, mm. and and to really give the best service. Meaning, if just just for example, I'll, I'll be I'll I'll say my <laughs> and 
there has been a time where I'm, I'm running behind mm. really late. I was running behind. And in this case, I did everything that I could in my chance to, to give, to address the client, have run him behind and apologize. And, and for whatever the reason was, and it, it, actually, you know what? <laughs> I was like, while he's in the chair, he was upset that it was it was late. It's definitely gave him the the same service quality, sure. whether I'm late or not. As as he was uh, as he was leaving, he was he was really he was really uh, he was really upset. And then, but the thing because of he said I didn't value his time. But really, I I feel like if I what I, I look back at it, what have I. What have I done? What did I do? Did I do everything that best I could? Okay. And, and, and did I retaliate? No, I was like, no. But I really, I just, if anything, I offered to, to take care of the service for his time, for his, his cut. And then in that case, I feel like, I don't know if that's the right or wrong, but really, I did everything that I could, and he was unhappy still. That's why, when you're asking, has there ever been a time where a client was unsatisfied and happy? Yes, he, he left. He left upset because of he was late or mm. something. But then mm. I feel mm. like in that case, I I did everything that I could and I apologize. It's also and how you how you recover from it. You know, like yeah. how do you how do you treat the situation? You know. Yeah. So it's like apologizing for it and stating what the what the problem was, and it's, it's how you fix it next time. You know. Yeah. What um, what else can you ask? Because it's so subjective when you like you have a certain vision for someone's cut in your head, and what if that vision doesn't meet their expectations? Right, so like, what else can you do to set yourself up for success before starting the cut? You know, bef- besides asking, oh, what did you get last time? Oh, well, is there anything? It's, it's like all about consultation. the consultation. consultation. Oh, yeah, that's what, that's a What main are their likes and dislikes, and what what's their vision and what's their goal, mm-hmm. and how and how we can you know can help with that? Because the consultation is probably the most important part of the haircut. Mm-hmm. Um, the haircut itself is probably a little bit easier, mm. you know. Once you guys are on the same page, you get to know uh, the customer, the guest, that uh, what they mm-hmm. what they do for work. Kind of, you know, you kind of ta- like I said, we're tailoring this haircut to them. Not only just our head shape, their their hair type, yeah. or whatever. It's it's the whole look, you know. And a lot of clients come in with like a photo too. Oh, for so that helps yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah, it does. You could yeah. go off of that. Yeah. You know? that's how you prepare and then in the consultation you're also looking for the head shape and making sure you know okay there's a colic here I gotta watch out for that you know so you're kind of building this thing as you're having a conversation with with the customer yeah so yeah what are what are some things if there are any things that you wish you were taught in barber school that you learned on your own Because that collar thing's huge, and not a lot of barbers pay it. I, to, in my experience, haven't paid attention to it. I remember what, the first time, I, one of the first few times I came to Andres, like one of you, I think either Pat or Carlo, was explaining like the way like you should be cutting around it, and I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Um, man, I mean, it's just overall experience. I mean, there's only a certain yeah. amount of stuff that you can learn in school in, in that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And like, so, it's, anything it's hard that you to wish pick you knew. One thing, I mean. Going in, going in depth of. I mean, I, the amount of work and time that you do in fifteen hundred hours, I, just the fact of just seeing more heads, you know, seeing more cuts. That's the only. There's nothing specific I can say. It's it's that's a hard question. It's like because yeah. it's like everything. <laughs> like right. you, to know more about every single part of it, shears, mm. um, even more on the head shapes. It's like to just keep repeating and just keep doing it all you know? okay um now you guys got real lucky with um building your dream team if you were in the room um in in the future to bring on future barbers what's the process to come on like what's your process of just of coming in here filtering hanging out with yeah. us just hanging out okay just, okay just come in. we have to see yourself, yeah introduce yourself come in and just just let us know about yourself and, and, and you got to show us that you really want to be here that you really want to be a barber you know that okay. you really do have this passion okay but the, for it. The, the cutting aspect can always be taught it's it's character we want we we, we, we 
definitely people who have character and and how they carry themselves how they present themselves professional classy all that th those those type of things is what that is what it's hard to teach you can't yeah, really you can't teach, teach that, that. You can't mm -hmm. teach that but skills we have so many people who've been covered we and we we are in, we have are in an environment that we like to share knowledge to teach and to help each other so yeah. that's not a problem at all interesting um, and to go with that and to go with collabing with other barbers um, I think you guys did it a while ago but maybe it was like an in-house um, like a training session like mm -hmm. do you guys see that as something that can be another possibility oh, in the future oh, just sure. future yes. mind sure. jams with other barbers oh, just yes. a, a collective of the, yes. like, sharing information it's, it's, it's fun yeah. yeah it's just we just got to plan it out and, and we, we do intend to have more no, those are fun. <laughs> where, yeah. So, what's where can you take like outside of owning a shop? What can a barber do to just grow their roots? Just like keep growing and expanding. Mm -hmm. So, aside from owning your own business, maybe like are there? I'm sure there are barbers that like run s seminars, at events, yes. right? Yeah, right. Every, okay. Everybody's doing education. Like. What? What else? I mean, what about? And we talked about this before, but like just giving back to the community. Yes. People that maybe can't afford cuts but need cuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just, yeah. you could, nowadays we have clippers are cordless, you can cut anywhere you want, bring it anywhere, you can, okay. people, people you meet and help, help people down from the streets, or you can even bring it doing house calls, high-end house calls. Yeah. It's, it's really wherever you want to take barbering to it, and, and aside from teaching, there's also, there's different, there's a platform, there's, uh, yeah, different platforms, platforms, platforms that you could like, uh, you can cut like platform uh, cutting on on stages where people just just look and learn your your sponsorships sponsors that's what I'm saying. Oh. You can you can get sponsored mm -hmm. by companies oh. where you go to hair shows trade shows and you're not necessarily yeah you you could be people ask you you could teach but you really you're just representing their brand and just cut and which is kind of cool to see. Yeah. You make products. You make can products, literally yeah. do. It, it, are you are you focusing you like the question mainly on barbering itself or? What can where, you do where, with that skill set? That skill set, that skill set is one thing. Mm. Um, you know, going back to character and building a network and a brand, you know. the brand, the network, and you know, having everything else. What's the word I'm looking for? Stem. It stems from barbering, but then that it, it could go. Any, any which way Whatever you want way to go. you want to yeah. take it. Barbering really? is just the beginning. You know, cutting hair is just the basis of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> what, um... Because... Be on set. You can even take cutting hair and cut hair on set. And for cutting people for mu music videos, movies, you can do... Yeah, mm -hmm. you can be anywhere. And that's what's, that's what's kind of cool, depending on what kind of barber or what kind of experiences that you... What suits you and your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Damn. Um, how long should a standard cut take? <laughs> oh, man. That's up, that's, that's up to the barber. Know, the artist, up to the barber. You know, yeah, right? whenever they feel yeah. that, you know, it's done and it's right. Oh, wow. That's when it's done. Has There's anyone no told you, like, it's taking too long? <laughs> kids. <Carl>? Little kids. <laughs> kids. <laughs> little <Yeah>. kids. <laughs> we start screaming at our attention. But really, that's like, I think it's just, like, a, a, a side. That's something I'm constantly working and, and learning about my skill and, and kind of learn how to be more efficient but really it's the quality at the end of the day is like remember so w before i cut i have this vision of the picture and it, it, like, like dang said this is a feeling of when you feel it it's right but there's a vision of the picture so it's cutting it until it hits that then 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 i then i satisfy my feeling inside of the art then for the client that means i know that they're getting the best of me what mm -hmm. i can give but that doesn't necessarily, that's why I, the time is, is so valuable now. And I'm sorry for <laughs> everyone. I'm sorry for being. Shout, shout out to Carlos uh, clients. Clients, man. I appreciate you, you guys. Know, but, but like, I've never left wanna, unsatisfied. I just want. That's the thing though, you know? I just want, I just want to give everybody the best of what I can. And I, maybe sometimes I do overthink because I want, I think so much of wanting to make it so perfect, but really can't, but. I mean, that's yeah. a good problem. To, yeah. Your barber OCD, 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 yeah, barber OCD, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but in the end of the day, 
people got stuff to do, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of a balance between, you know, perfection or your your um, attempt at it, and uh, and people gotta go, you know. So yeah. I, for me, I think myself, like I definitely, if I get a ten minute haircut, I don't think it's done, you know. Right. For sure. Right. right. As uh, as co owners, um, how do you feel about your team members? Um, trying to seek out their own professional development and kind of making the name for themselves. Like if they were to pick up clients on their own, like maybe do it. house we're calls. All for it. You're all yeah, for 100%. it. Yeah. Any way we can oh. help and whatever, cultivate that, and whatever help they need. Whatever they're trying there. to do, yeah. if we can help in any way. Yeah, man. We want them to reach their goals. I feel like there's a low turnover rate, especially with you guys since you've built a dream team. Oh, I mean, like I said, we just started. So yeah. it's like, right. it's like, we don't know where everyone's gonna go, and I mean, we only assume. And it's okay if people do go. Oh yeah, yeah most definitely, most definitely. We just, we're, I, hundred percent support. I feel like I, if anyone, were to have and want to get their own shop, or or even, for something and the opportunity or experience it for their life, we would support and and really we wanna, we do wanna give everything we can and even help start them, mm-hmm. start them, to just the way that. Kirk was to us mm. when he worked at Andre. He led by example. Yeah. He led yeah. by example. He helped us. He, he supported us and comes in the shop and we still, we can remain that, that connection. I, I personally, we, we personally do not want to, we, we spent all these years with your family. Then the moment that they're not with us, it's not like you forget about all that. No, it's, it's, it's forever. We, we yeah. stay tight forever. And yeah. Mm, I think that at the same time, like we want to, we do want to build something where like like you said you know I feel, I feel like barbering does have a high turnover rate okay because you know you know people you know, what what are they, they seeking then why are they leaving are they, like like you got maybe I guess you guys left because you wanted to make your own name like everyone wants to make an, mm-hmm. their own name for themselves but maybe one day they they've come to a a collective fernwood where they believe in the overall the vi- mission the vi- of yeah, knowing the your vision, roots and yeah. the vision right so maybe they're, they're we're all finding for a, a second family that Exa- yeah yeah. That you sit well with for sure i mean okay. i mean i think with any job if you enjoy the environment that you're working at you're gonna stay there and i'm sure you guys don't feel like bosses no, no. i, I mean all. i don't want to yeah not at all not at all yeah, i mean yeah i mean we're just trying to not only for the customers it's just for all of us as well create an environment that we just enjoy coming to because a lot of us this, we're here maybe longer than we are at home, you know, mm. and you know, and and just trying to trying to make that a little easier. And good good segue, because you guys work live to work. Well, you know, your work is your life essentially. Whereas a lot of people work to live, and like whatever they do professionally is just a paycheck, and they go home, and that's when they feel like they're living. Oh man, yeah. yeah. The crazy thing is, is like, when when it comes to when I come into the day to work and I look at the either clients or people who's in, it's really expressing yourself, meeting people and helping them, and and to determine if it was a good day or not. At the end of the day, were people happy? Do I feel that I get a good feeling from my day of helping people? Yeah, then that's it. Then that's my day. That's life. That's the beauty. That's simple as that. The number when I look at this is extra, but really, like, yeah, it's just. Yeah, we do get to wake up every day and, like, isn't that amazing? Enjoy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just happy. Like, not a lot of people can say that. But it, we get to do what we love to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, you, get, you know, wake up, come to work with my brothers, you know, listen to good music, vibe out, good conversations. You know, everybody that walks through that door is family, too. So it's literally like just catching up with them and, you know. What's the furthest someone drives to come here? Ooh, I have from all the way from Gurney. Get the fuck out. I've had, actually, I have uh, clients who fly in to get haircuts. And then New York. How often? Once a month? Uh, Once a month. Once or three weeks. Three, oh four weeks. God. Well, he travels yeah. a lot for work. Yeah, yeah. So that work. He, he travels, travels for work. work it's not just because, yeah. just for, he just travels not a just, lot. Yeah. But I do have a, you know, a friend yeah. or client who lives in New York and he comes back every month to get a haircut. Oh my God. So he won't get a haircut anywhere else. <laughs> That's so crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. 
Um, any advice for up and coming um, barbers? Ooh. Have Just fun keep, with it. yeah, have yeah. fun. Just keep have pushing, fun. you know, keep pushing forward. Have you seen any barbers that ended up not liking it? I guess. Um. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I have. Or Definitely. or or liking it, but still struggling. Like how? At what point do you're like? Oh, I don't know if you got it. Or is there not a point? Like like, for, well, it's not up to me to be like, hey, this guy doesn't got it. you know. Like it, it it's it's in, it's all up to them. You know, if they want to continue it or not. Maybe something came up that in their life is better. You know, mm-hmm. everyone, yes. it's every situation mm-hmm. is different. So I wouldn't say that just because they started stopped being a barber that was a failure. You know, maybe they're just really good, but it's just something for their family setting just fits. And, and they have another opportunity that is greater for them. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I see that. Damn. But, but yeah, any, any just broad advice? Any broad, like as up and come in? Always just ask as many questions, learn yeah. from, from other people who've been doing it before. Don't be shy mm. to ask for help or questions or watch videos because the moment you feel like you know it all and, and you, you feel like you got it, only then that's when you limit and you will stunt the yeah, don't be cocky yeah. don't be selfish yeah that's another you're always learning just always students always, always do yeah yeah you guys don't even call yourself masters no not, not at all definitely not not at all um i noticed that you guys don't used to carry lay right at um andres hmm. i don't see that here <laughs> is there do, do barbers kind of make their own products is that is that a they're, thing they're, they're, they do yeah people really? do mm-hmm. Okay. Eventually, we'd yeah. want to, to do our That's own, That's so too. cool. Um, but it's just here. It's just very minimal. Like, we just wanted to... We, yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff out there. There's, there's so much product. Like yeah, it doesn't saying, have it's to it's be like, just one thing. It doesn't have to yeah. be just lay right, you know? Mm. All personal preference. It's all preference. Hmm. It's like we were talking about craft beer, right? There's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. It's hard a to lot. keep up. Um, like with product, too. Where do you want? Where do you see Fernwood in five to ten years? Ooh, beacon of the community. A beacon of the still, community. <laughs> still here. Still here. Still here. I, I hope. I hope we're still here. Um, yeah, who knows? Still helping. Helping other. I. Yeah, I just got this. This weird. I mean, for myself, it's like when I say things. When I say things out loud and when I see my vision, until it actually happens or it's something concrete, then when I I can talk about it. Okay. Because if I feel like it doesn't want to say, he's a, he's it. He's a true believer. Uh, and, and, and and so far, and just from past experiences, it has. So like when I when I say things, because when I say something out loud, like you kind of, mm-hmm. but it but feels you good cr- to hear it. You it create feels, yeah. you create accountability. People hold you accountable. True. Yeah. 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 Or or not even that. I mean, even if you like wrote it down on paper and tucked it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, that's, you're like that's what I, that's dumping more, that's it, dumping of, it into. That's what I do. Yeah. That's what I do. Making I'll, it concrete. I, and I have done that. Okay. And I have okay. done that. Okay. And actually, I wrote that in the, <laughs> for the shop. I wrote that. that and I wrote that down, and I yeah. can show that. But but that's why like I can't. I mean, I can't. Okay, but that's, I just that's feel, cool. Yeah. At the same time, I like to speak things into existence as well. Yeah. So. What do you think it would it, it, it will be in four or five years? Five to ten years. Oh man. I mean, do you think that you lose its, we talked about this earlier, but like lose its charm if you're trying to scale too quickly? Yeah, and it, you know, we have something happened, good, like why ruin yeah, it, right, in a way? Yeah, if it happened to the point where we, we it, it worked in, in the benefit for, for the, the whole thing, like the whole picture is to have another shop, then it is. But if for, at the moment, this is, this is the yeah. goal, this is what we're, how do we improve? Yeah. And, I do, yeah, I do want to create a, a space for, you know, any individual who's, just you know I wouldn't say lost but they don't know exactly what they want to do oh. and you know this is something where you can come into and it's so, so hard to speak on like could you just maybe what if you contacted the alderman and of uh, is there an alderman of North Center is that is that yeah, the thing uh-huh, right and uh-huh. and be like hey you know if you could put out a flyer for people that are interested in becoming barbers we'd be more than happy to host you know a shot like a a, you know, a meet and greet, um, mm-hmm. or like a shadowing opportunity. If that's something you you guys are yeah, I mean, it's, 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 like, yeah. we've definitely talked about stuff. Like oh, that. okay, okay. Yeah, but like, yeah. Um, yeah, anybody no, that is seeking, you know, something. coming to to, you know? to barbering, and if we can even help that, you know, move along. And it doesn't. 
put it this way, it doesn't even have to be barbering. It's almost like if you just want to go... is a base of it. Yeah, like if, or like if you wanted to do like what you love to do, a passion, whatever it is, you know. Any way we can help. Help showcase you and help yeah. pr promote or help support you in that way. Mm. We have a lot of talented people that come in here, photographers, artists, musicians, yeah, yeah. DJs, all types. Have you guys, um, and you had art hanging up earlier, have you guys heard of so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if you had a so far show in here? Yeah, I mean, cool. that that's also something we've talked about. Like something, you know, use the space, right? And, and it doesn't even have to be so far. But like, you, I'm yeah, sure you guys yeah. know Boy. up and coming artists that would, mm -hmm. you know, would love a space, and you guys have a beautiful space here. So Thank I mean, you. I think that'd be Thanks. great. Thank you. We we want to just also have a space for what you said with the art. If anybody, any artist that wanted to, you know, showcase showcase any of their work here, you know, hit us up. Like mm -hmm. for sure. Anybody who needs a home. Oh, You're welcome man. here. Because, yeah. Damn. In any any aspect of, of your life, you know. Right. Phys you know, mentally or physically or right, whatever. Right, Let's right. make it work. Anything. Yeah. If you have an idea, hit us up. Let's see yeah. how we can help each other. Help each other. Collab. Yeah. Collab. I think collabs make the world go round. They're yes. fun. You know? Yeah. Like, they're fun. Right. Like, how, yeah. how, crea how can you get creative with... Yeah, we're collabing yeah. right now. We are. No, th like this isn't an excuse to have good conversation. I'm not one for um, uh, small talk. Yeah. I don't do small talk. I, ca yeah. I can't talk about the weather. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. this is my excuse to like yeah. just Same. mind jam with people. Mm -hmm. And then you with one-on-one -on -one with, with your exactly. guests in the chair, exactly. that's your opportunity yes. to mind jam. So this is like new for me, you know, new for us. Yeah. So I feel I've like this, yeah, being, <laughs> being in front of a camera, it feels... Weird. different yeah. yeah you know do you feel but like your soul is being sucked into the camera no or something? no it's no i i don't i'm still getting used to it i don't feel like i'm being myself oh oh okay if, if yeah if we want to be you know truthful here even an hour in it's no i mean i still feel comfortable it's been <laughs> like, <God. wow. laughs> but like I, I, you know i think if you were to film me speaking to my you know friends or clients sure. whoever in the chair would be it'd be similar but like I, you you would catch more of who I am mm, as a person. Interesting. You know? Yeah, I thought about doing that, doing like a behind the scenes of mm -hmm. that, but I don't think I have the time to be running around and yeah, catching yeah. you guys in your in your space. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe one day. Um, but that's... No, but we appreciate this. Like, this is cool. Yeah. You is know, there like, is there anything else? You guys have said plenty to your, to your past guests, but is there anything else that you would say to up-and-coming um, barbers or any of the family members that have walked through the doors here for Fernwood? What do we want to say to him? Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Thank Just you. Just thank you for, yeah. you know, being there for us, supporting us. And, and you know, we love you guys. We love it. Yeah, especially especially the family at home, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm married. I got a little, little girl. Um, and it's, it's, for me, it's just finding the balance between home and my other home. Well, how, how long, how, how often are you away from, from home? Well, I mean, I it's mean, just like any any work day, but it's just in a sense, it's like, you know, especially opening up a shop. There's mm -hmm. a lot. There's mm -hmm. so much never that done goes working, into it. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it's fun and all, but there's also it's a business. Like you, you're constantly thinking about it, and then kind of how to shut off when you get home, you know. And I, I yeah. thank you for holding it down, Erica. Yeah. Casey, I'd like to to talk. I mean, if I'm yeah, to talk to all the barbers, people, and clients, fans, friends who come into the shop is that for for everything that people had say good things to say about Fernwood, the shop, the space. I I and I really really want to say that it wouldn't really wouldn't be without without the energy and the the, the positivity that the people that are in our chairs, because. When people say, oh, I feel this vibe, but really, the vibe isn't really just coming from the barbers. All we're, what we're doing yes. is that it was the art part. The vibe is what everybody else who's sitting and waiting and, mm. and, and talking to each other. That is what makes Fernwood what it is. And someone says, like, you can't, I, I don't know, I can't explain it. And that, that thing is, 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 I feel like it's like a power. Like, it's like, a, it's it's like palpable. Something you can feel it. it. You can feel it, but you can't. So that's why, unless you come into the shop, then you can really feel what, what it is, what it's about. But, but really, we're not doing. We we just want to help people, but yet something more comes back from it, and that's thanks. Thanks that's for plus, everyone who you know, believes yeah. in us too. Yeah. Damn, thank you guys for doing this. Um, where can people find you guys? Um, 
Instagram, Fernwood, sure. Fernwood, Fernwood Barbers. Barbers. Yeah. 4025 North Damon, Chicago, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Okay. At Fernwood Barbers. At yeah. Fernwood Barbers. At Fernwood Barbers. Yeah, Fernwood yeah. Barbers at Gmail. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll link all you guys yeah. in, in the video and stuff like that. But um, thank you guys so much for, for coming on. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank right. you for having us. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Stay curious. Abla Aloha. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.